Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I invite you to please stand as you are comfortable. And on this sixth Sunday of Easter, yes, it is still the Easter season, let's give it a big Easter chance one more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now this time without hesitation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I invite you to join me in singing the gathering hymn, hymn 532 in the Red Hymn. Take the wine and the 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In the waters of baptism, we are united with Christ and made to be entirely new people. Therefore, during this Easter season, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We praise you, O God, for water. The Silurian Donovan Aquifer and Lake Michigan who provide our waters. The rain that nourishes animals and plants. The water for drinking, for bathing, and sustaining. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise, we praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our storied waters. A flood that cleansed the earth. The sea that drowned the enemy. A river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise, we praise you, you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, healing at the Pool of Bethsaida, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for you breathe into this water to wash away our selfishness, and you birth us each day into your peace and joy. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We, we praise, praise you, O God, God for, for baptism. baptism. O God, you are the ocean sustaining the earth. O God, you are the river saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain granting us abundant life. We praise you, O God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen and alleluia. Amen and alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you poured out your spirit upon all people and called us into a love that surpasses all understanding. Be with us as we bear the good fruit of your love and spread it throughout this world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptism these people, for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we, that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. At this time, I want to invite those who are ages five to nine to join Ms. Amy in the back a doorway, the center doorway, to head down for Sunday school. Those who are participating in Sunday school will be joining us um, just after the sermon. The rest of the assembly, I invite you to please stand as you are comfortable for the Holy Gospel. the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I've heard from my father. You did not choose me but I choose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. 
I'm giving you these commands so you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. seated. This week, Jesus says, as my Father has loved me, so I have loved you. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now this is the greatest commandment we have, the greatest commandment we have ever been given. And even though these words are written today in the gospel, we received this law way before the gospel of John, way before Jesus ever walked the earth. God gave us this commandment in the Torah. Deuteronomy, it is written, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And Leviticus, it says that because of that love, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This greatest commandment is very simple. Because God loves us, we should love others. If we love God, we can show it by loving others. But for generations, since literally the very beginning, we, the people of God, have asked a quiet little question. Who is not my neighbor? Who is it permissible for me to not love, to not include in my community, to not allow into the assembly? Surely there are limits to God's love, right? Surely there are limits to those the people of God are supposed to love, right? Well, our story today from Acts will help us come close to that question. Now, the book of Acts is one that we have paid very close attention to during this season of Easter. Everything in this book takes place after Jesus has died, been resurrected, come back, and ascended into heaven. Acts is all about the good news of God's love being sent out into the whole world. As Thomas Long says, gathering under the wings of God's mercy more and more people who have been lost, pushed away, and forgotten. So our reading from Acts is about those people, the lost, pushed away, and forgotten people, people who we might consider unlikely neighbors. But our story actually begins at the beginning of chapter 10, which is never covered in any lectionary cycle. So that's where we're going to start. There was a city northeast of Jerusalem called Caesarea by the Sea. It was a port city, and because of that, it was filled with soldiers in the Roman army. There was a centurion living there, an officer in charge of hundreds of soldiers, and his name was Cornelius. Now, Luke tells us that Cornelius was a devout man who honored God with everything he had and everything he was. He gave generously, and he prayed constantly, and because of him, everyone in his household believed in God, too. Cornelius honored God's commandments, but he wasn't Jewish because he wasn't descended from one of the sons of Jacob. And even though there was an ancient conversion ritual, a way that he could have converted to Judaism, we know he hadn't done it because he wasn't circumcised. And because he wasn't circumcised, he would never have been able to enter the temple of God, no matter how much he loved God. One day, at about three o'clock, the time of day for ritual Jewish prayer, Cornelius was praying. And suddenly he received a vision from heaven. 
An angel of God appeared and called to him by name and said, Cornelius, the prayers you've prayed and the money you have shared, these have been raised up to God as a sacrifice. Now there is a man staying by the sea in the city of Joppa. Send for him and listen to what he has to say. So immediately, the believer, Cornelius, gathered three of his men and told them everything that had happened and sent them south to Joppa to find someone, someone named Simon Peter, a name you will recognize because it is the name of a disciple of Jesus Christ. The next day, as the contingent from Caesarea is approaching Joppa on foot, we meet Simon Peter again. He's climbed up on the roof of his house to pray, but it's noon, which is time for lunch, so he's hungry. And then something happens during his prayer. He falls into a trance. He receives a vision from heaven. He sees the heavens above split open, and then something weird happens. It, it looks almost like a bed sheet is being lowered down from heaven to the ground. And as the sheet hits the ground and the four corners open, he sees that the bedsheet is filled with animals, all kinds of four-legged animals and reptiles and birds. And then he hears a voice. It says, get up, Simon Peter, kill and eat. Simon Peter says, by no means, Lord, I have never eaten anything that is unclean or profane. The voice commands him again, and again he says no. This happens three times. Can you remember another time that Simon Peter denied God three times? Well, he wasn't going to make that mistake again. Finally, the voice said, what God has made clean, you must not call unclean. And then he woke up. And now Simon Peter was really confused. He did not know what to make of this vision. At, the, at that very moment, he looked down from the roof, and then he saw that there were three men over, over there by the gate calling into the house, Hello? Is Simon Peter staying here? While Simon Peter was still thinking, the Spirit of the Lord said to him, Look, there are three men over there looking for you. Get up. Go down and go to them now, because I was the one who sent them. So he went, and he didn't go alone. There were some other people who went with him, siblings in faith from Joppa, Jewish believers in Jesus. The following day, the whole group of them made it back to Caesarea. Now by this time, Cornelius was expecting them. And he had gathered everyone in his household, plus all of his relatives and all of his friends and everyone he worked with and basically everyone he knew. When Simon Peter arrived, Cornelius met him at the gate and cried. He fell down on his knees, worshiping him. And then Simon Peter said something very sweet. He said, get up, I'm only a person. And he offered Cornelius a hand, and together they walked into the house. They crossed the threshold. And inside the house, Simon Peter saw that there were many people assembled, and he said to them, you yourselves know that it is considered improper for a Jew to stay in the home of a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. That is one of my favorite verses in all of scripture. God has shown me that I should not call anything unclean or profane. Simon Peter continues saying, now may I ask why have you sent for me? And then Cornelius tells him the story of an angel of the Lord coming to him in a vision, a story so extraordinary that Simon Peter probably wouldn't have believed it if he hadn't had an extraordinary story himself. And then Simon Peter says, I understand, I understand now, that for God there is no big difference between us. Rather, in, in every people who loves God and honors the commandments, anyone who does that is acceptable in God's sight. 
Now, that is beautiful, but I want to pause for a second. This moment is beautiful. This is the moment where Simon Peter understands the truth of God's love. But I would get an earful from seminary Nicholas over there, and I would deserve it if I didn't underline this right now. This realization is not Simon Peter thinking there is something wrong with Judaism. God has a special relationship with the Jewish people, the people of the Torah. It was true then, and it is true now. And the law that God gave to Moses, not one letter of it has passed away. The covenants that God made with Noah and Abraham and Moses and David, those covenants have not and will not pass away. But in Jesus, we have a new covenant. This is the covenant that lets us, the Gentiles, be inheritors of the promise. In our first John reading today, there was this beautiful little line that said, Jesus is the one who came by water and blood, not water only, but by blood. Therefore, we are God's people. We are inheritors of the promise, not by our own blood, like our Jewish siblings who are descended from Jacob, but by God's blood through Jesus. And as we pray at this altar, the cup is the new covenant in Jesus' blood shed for us and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. In the beginning, I, I mentioned that question about neighbors and who belongs in the assembly of God and who deserves to be included as God's people. And it turns out that we are the unlikely neighbors. We are the ones the promise was not given to at first. But God has claimed us just the same. And as God said to Simon Peter, what I have called clean, you shall not call unclean. So this is the story that Simon Peter gave to Cornelius and his house and his family and his friends and everyone he worked with and everyone he knew. He told the story of Jesus anointed by God to preach peace and love throughout the world, and how his blood was the new covenant for the forgiveness of sin for all people. And while Simon Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard that good word. The circumcised believers from Joppa were astounded that the gift of God's Holy Spirit had poured out even on the Gentiles. And then Peter said, well, how can anyone withhold water from baptizing these people? For they have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So Simon Peter ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then he stayed with them in Cornelius' house, though it was improper, because what God has called clean, let no one call unclean. I wish we could spend a whole year going through the book of Acts. The stories in this book cover God's love going so deep and so wide it can never be contained. A love that spills out into the world, a love that we can't keep quiet. But for now, this sixth week of Easter, I wonder how encountering this story will change us. Dear people, Soon we will have a few moments of meditation. So now I invite you to close your eyes and wonder. I wonder what it could look like to receive a vision from heaven today. I wonder who is your unlikely neighbor in this new covenant of life? I wonder, what would you do if the Holy Spirit whispered in your ear, you see those people? Don't hesitate. Get up, go down, and go to them, because I was the one who sent them. I wonder.
Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding to heart, understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. This week we pray for our siblings in Southeast Asia, in the nations of India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. God of grace, you speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that every kind of living thing may flourish in beautiful diversity. On this day, we pray for the tens of thousands of species found nowhere else in the world but the island of Sri Lanka, like the purple-faced leaf monkey, the tiny slender loris, the miniature mouse deer, and the Sri Lankan mango. May the rainforests and coral reefs of Sri Lanka be honored and stewarded from generation to generation. God of grace, your world is divided and nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. This week we pray especially for the region of Kashmir where conflict between nations threatens families and forests alike. God, we know you are there among the people Give them your hope for a world of complete peace and perfect justice. God of grace, your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by violence, xenophobia, and homophobia. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We especially pray for those we name now, whether silently or aloud. All these people and their stories are known to you. God of grace, Your love is poured out on all people of all sexual orientations and gender expressions. God, we praise you. We join our siblings in the United Methodist Church in celebration because this week at their church-wide gathering, with no debate, they voted to overturn a decades-long policy of homophobia. From this day forward, the United Methodist Church will ordain LGBTQ clergy. Thanks be to God. God of grace, your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us, especially Jesus' disciple Thomas, who was sent out as the apostle to India, now the most populous country in the world. We pray alongside our Muslim and Hindu siblings in India and Pakistan, who call out the name of holy love in other words, but are known to you just as we are. 
At the end of this world, may we all be brought together in your love. God of grace, Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Dear people, once you have finished passing the peace, I invite you to be seated. And at this time, I would like to invite any children who are here to join me in the back for the children's message. Lexi, do you know what to do with this? You do? Do you want to? All right. Happy Easter, everyone. Now, some of you might be wondering, <laughs> is it still Easter? But yes, by my count, it is very much still Easter. We have the signs of the resurrection all around us. <laughs> Thank you so much. <sighs> Let's see. I think today is the sixth week of Easter. This is one, two, three, four. Oh, this isn't right. Can someone help me move the world? Lexi, would you like to help me? And pick it up and then put it right there. Perfect. Now it's on the sixth Sunday of Easter. You can't see here, but this space right between the fifth and the sixth Sunday of Easter that's a special space because the story between them, that's all right. It's okay. The story between those days is a big story. It's the same story last week as it was this week, the gospel message. Are you ready to hear a story? Let's see, I need to get myself ready here. Do you want to sit down? Here, you can sit down right there. Okay, this is a big story. Can everyone see? Yeah. Okay. Now this is the season of Easter, which means that it's time for the color white. The color of pure celebration. You know, once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things, the people followed him. And one day, the people following him asked, Jesus, who are you? And then he said something very confusing. Jesus said, my father is the vine grower. I am the vine. That's a curly one. And you are the branches. Look, here is the vine, and the branches grow from the vine. Jesus said, Be close to me as I am close to you.
when the branches are close to the vine, they will grow fruit together. Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And together, we grow the fruit. There's so much fruit here. Would you help me put some down? Put it where you think it would look best. Wow, this looks so beautiful. Jesus said, as my father loves me, I love you. This is my commandment. As I love you, love one another. Look, I am the vine and you are the branches, and I have commanded you to bear fruit that lasts. Fruit like this. I wonder, what kind of fruit is this? A purple. It's purple fruit. Maybe the fruits of the spirit? Well, that's like a metaphorical. It's like a metaphor. Mm-hmm. It is a metaphor. I wonder. I wonder if it's a plum. It's, it's for me to eat. It's for you to eat? It's for all of us to eat. It's for, for, for my body to eat. Yeah. You know what? I wonder if, oh my gosh, look at that. You have so much of the fruit. Thank you. You know, Jesus said, I am the vine and we are the branches. I wonder which one of these branches you are. Is it going to be me? I think I'm this one. I like that it has a little end. Okay. You found another one? Which one? I'm going to put it down. I wonder if Not you have like ever that. seen this shape before. Look at it, I did it. <gasps> you did it. Oh. Oh. I wonder what this fruit could really be. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for listening to this big story. And I will leave these back here in case you want to work with them. And now it is time for the announcements. Well, it's good to be with you all here this sixth Sunday of the Easter season. And especially to those of you who are joining us for the very first time, I want to extend a special welcome to you today and to remind you that this place is a place for you. No matter your spiritual or religious history or experience, this is a place where you can feel welcome. So that we can get a chance to welcome you a bit more fully, I want to direct your attention to the link in the QR code that is either on your screen or in your bulletin. If you follow that link in the QR code, it's going to take you over to our digital connect card. And if you're here in person, there's also a card in the pew in front of you, which is our physical connect card. We'd love for you to check off that you're visiting with us today so that we can get a chance to reach out to you. Thank you for being here with us and to share a bit more information about our community and eventually learn a bit more about you as well. Following our dismissal in this space today, our service continues as it does each Sunday in our fellowship hall. We'll have a time of conversation, a time of snacks. This is that time where we get a chance to embody what we proclaim during worship, to get to know one another. And so ours is an ever-changing community, and so get a chance to reach out and to meet somebody new today as uh, we gather around food and drink. And then, shortly after you get food and drink, I would invite you to join Dr. Jordan up here at the organ.
because we're going to have an opportunity to do what, is called, what we're calling an organ crawl. And literally, when we open up all the big things, you're going to have to kind of crawl down a little bit to see inside, to see the depth of the organ. And Dr. Jordan's going to share a bit more about how that works, the history of it, um, so that you can get a chance uh, to know a little bit more about probably our most famous instrument in this building. So too, a little bit later after our time of organ crawl, we have our WPLC Basics, our new member, newcomer class. This is a great class for people who are interested in maybe becoming a member. This is a great class for people who are newer to the community and want to know how they can kind of get more connected with our ministries. This is a perfect class for people who are like, what does it mean to be Lutheran or ELCA or what, what is this Wicker Park Lutheran Church thing? We're going to go through all of that. And so from 1230 until 1, we're going to have lunch. And then 1 to 4 is the, the class component with lots of questions and answers and getting a chance to learn a little bit more. Even if you haven't RSVP'd, you're warmly welcome to join us for that. We'll have plenty of food, um, conversation, and a great way to get a little bit more knowledge about our faith community here. So too, I want to get a chance um, to remind you that we are in the middle of our A Place for All capital campaign. We are over halfway to our goal for the campaign, and you may be getting emails or texts or phone calls from members of the congregation who want to get together and just share a little bit more about the campaign um, and invite you to make a uh, donation and a gift towards that campaign. Because we have over 150 people that we need to get through in the next month and a half, if you are getting that email, that text, that phone call, please do your very best um, to get back to them as soon as possible so that we can get a chance to share a bit more about that campaign. So too, as we move into the month of May here, it is um, a, a time that we often say goodbye and farewell to our menace, many uh, seminary students, to our pastoral residents. As a teaching congregation, we have a great opportunity during the program year to get a chance to, to welcome faces. And then this is the, the sad part where we have to say goodbye. And we know that that is part of what we do here as we send them off um, to wonderful things ahead. And so next Sunday, May 12th, we're going to be saying um, see you later, not goodbye forever, to Seminarian Nicholas as he will be beginning his internship year in the months ahead. And then we will be saying goodbye to Vicar Taylor on May 19th because last week while she was gone, she officially received a call from a congregation in Pennsylvania to be their pastor. So a big congratulations to her. And so join us on May 19th, so two weeks from today, as we celebrate Vicar Taylor and send her um, with God's blessings to uh, a whole entire new state and a whole new synod, and more importantly, um, to a new congregation where you get to share that beautiful ministry with them. All right, last announcement that I have is um, on that same day, May 19th, it is Pentecost Sunday. And so on that day, it is our tradition here that we will read the prayers of intercession in another language. If you speak another language, maybe it's Portuguese, maybe it is Spanish, maybe it is German or something else in between, um, please get a chance to talk to Vicar Taylor, either after service, send her an email. We're looking for a few different individuals to be able to share um, the prayers in diverse languages. On that same Sunday after service, then, we'll invite you to join us for an update for, from our uh, building task force, because we have finalized the design for the building to make sure that we can accommodate all of the things that we're looking for. So there's been some tweaks along the way. There's some been changes. We want to give you an update about that. And then we also want to have a little bit of discussion around how we can imagine the best use of our fellowship hall as we make those changes and move forward. So join us after service, May 19th, for an update on our design development process before we start moving into construction documents, which moves into permitting, which moves into actually making it a reality. So we are getting very close to all of that. So join us after service for an update and some conversation about how we can best see our, our community using this new um, uh, organization of our building. So that's, again, May 19th after service. There are a number of other announcements in your bulletin, so get a chance to check those out today. And in just a few moments, we are going to gather together for Holy Communion. 
here at this table, we have an opportunity um, to be fed with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Know that all are welcome at this table. It's not my table. It's not a Lutheran table, but it's Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive of this gift, I invite you to give of your offerings. We know many of you give electronically throughout the month, throughout the year, and this is the perfect opportunity to get a chance to reflect on those gifts that you're giving, to know how we're making God's abundance bear fruit here in this place and beyond our walls. So I invite you to get a chance to reflect on that or to give in the offering plate today, knowing that you are partnering with God in this work. as you are comfortable. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered by the Spirit's motherly care, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever.
Please stand as you are comfortable. As you go forth this day, receive this blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news that Christ is risen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>